Cassius. Clone Wars. Part 1. The Rookie and the Padawan. The following is a series of fan-written short stories set during the Clone Wars, approximately three years prior to Star Wars Revenge of the Sith. The following events are non-canon to any and all events in the Star Wars universe. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. A galaxy in turmoil. After the Battle of Geonosis, the galaxy has found itself in the midst of a deadly war for control between the mighty forces of the Separatists, led by the vile Count Dooku, and the Galactic Republic, led by Supreme Chancellor Palpatine. As armies of battle droids and clones clash for control over independent systems to gain footholds in the Clone War, the Jedi Knights have been dispatched across multiple systems to lead the Republic's forces in deadly battle against the Confederacy of Independent Systems. Cassius Urshan and his fellow Padawans Sarah Keto and Corbin Roth have found themselves pulled from the temple to aid their masters in leading battalions of clones into a war they want no part of. As the fires of this conflict spread, Cassius must balance his life as a Jedi with the new responsibilities thrust upon him as he aids his master in leading the 303rd Division. With new threats rising every day and the evil Dravok still on the loose, Cassius must tread carefully if he is to live to see the end of this war. Chapter 1 Cassius was breathing heavily on one knee. A bead of sweat trickled down the bridge of his nose and dropped off onto the floor. Strands of dark brown hair stuck to his forehead as he regained his composure. All around him were battle droids, aiming their weapons at him. Cassius stood on his feet, assuming a Form 3 stance. The droids opened fire against Cassius, who began deflecting the blaster shots off in different directions. His movements became faster and faster, the blur of his blade nearly becoming a barrier between him and the shots. Without notice, however, he was struck in the back, collapsing to the floor. That's enough. The droids immediately shut down. Cassius could hardly move after the stun blast. He was exhausted. Master Takai walked over to him and helped him up, handing him a towel to dry his face. Not bad. You said a new personal best. Cassius leaned against the wall and took a sip of water from his bottle. Records aren't going to mean much if I get myself killed. True. But a little fun now and then is good for morale. Cassius laughed. <laughs> oh, so you're the fun teacher all of a sudden? Master Takai smiled and looked through her data pad. When do we arrive on Kamino? In about an hour. You should get cleaned up. We don't want to greet our troopers looking like a slob. It's poor manners. Cassius rolled his eyes and grabbed his stuff, chuckling. <laughs> One minute you're fun, the next you're on a hygiene lecture. Cassius walked out of the training room and down the corridors of the Republic cruiser. He passed several clones who greeted him with a salute or a nod before he reached his quarters and closed the door. R3 was waiting in rest mode. His lights activated as Cassius entered the room. Training went well. We'll be landing pretty soon, so I need to wash up and get changed. Cassius stepped into the bathroom and into the shower, cleaning himself after a particularly rough session. The past four months have been difficult. He and his master spent half their time training and the other half traveling to different planets. On one hand, Cassius was thrilled to see the galaxy. On the other hand, he hadn't seen Sarah in three months and Corbin he hadn't seen in longer. But he told himself that he needed to stay focused if he was going to be of any use to his master. Shortly after the Battle of Geonosis, Master Takai had been assigned to help lead the 303rd Division. Cassius had spent weeks learning about military combat and jargon. To put it mildly, it wasn't fun. But again, it was necessary. It wasn't as though he had a choice in the matter either. After he had finished cleaning himself up, Cassius walked back into his room and saw a metal briefcase sitting on his bunk with a note attached. You'll be needing these. Cassius opened the case and found a set of clone-style armor to go over his tunic. A chest piece, shoulder guards, boot coverings, and van braces, with the insignia of the Jedi Order on the shoulder. Putting it on, he felt a bit silly, like he was pretending to be some great warrior leading armies into battle. Right. Come on, R3. Let's go find Master Takai. 
Cassius walked with R3 up to the main bridge, where many officers and troopers were stationed. Cassius saw Master Takai staring out the main window at the planet Kamino as they inched closer and closer to the watery world. She was wearing a set of armor quite similar to his, with the same emblem of the Order on her shoulder. That armor suits you, Cassius. Thanks. So, what's our mission here once we bring our division on board? Separatist forces are gathering on Herdessa. Our intelligence reports that they are attempting to recruit Herdessa to their cause. Thus far, Herdessa has remained fairly neutral, but that could change. We have reason to believe that if they refuse, the Separatists may resort to more violent methods of persuasion. So what are we going to do? You and I will take a transport to the planet and speak with the leader to try to win their favor for our cause. Republic forces will be close by in case things turn sour. Remember, this is a diplomatic mission above all else. We do not strike unless we are in danger. Understood? Yes, Master. Do you think Grievous will be there? I doubt it. More than likely, he's keeping to the shadows while they prepare for their next attack. Good. I'd hate to be anywhere near the same system as that monster. Agreed. Let's head to the transport. We're ready to make our descent. Cassius and Master Takai made their way to the hangar of the Republic cruiser and stepped on board the LAAT as it flew out into the cold, wet air. Soon, the transport sat down on a large landing pad. As soon as the door was opened, Cassius was hit with a rush of cold wind and rain. Pulling the hood of his robe up, he and his master walked onto the drenched platform towards the brightly lit building in front of them. Its shape reminded Cassius of the Senate building on Coruscant. As they made their way inside, they were greeted by one of the Kaminoans. Welcome, Master Jedi. I do hope your journey here was without incident. Thank you. We are quite eager to meet our troops. Of course. Follow me. Cassius and Master Takai followed the Kaminoan through the brightly lit white halls, a stark contrast to the dark and dreary weather outside. Lots of clones walked in single file groups through the corridors. So, they're all genetic copies of one person? Yes. Each of our troopers were cloned from the finest genetic template we could find. A bounty hunter called Django Fett. A bounty hunter? Doesn't seem like an ideal template. Oh, this bounty hunter was quite different from the common blaster-toting scum inhabiting the Outer Rim. His list of accomplishments was quite extensive. It was he who hunted down the former Jedi Komari Vosa and brought her to justice. He took on a Jedi? Quite soundly. He truly was the best candidate we could hope for. I'm sure you're aware that Jango Fett killed a number of Jedi at the Battle of Geonosis. You'll forgive me if I'm a tad suspicious. Rest assured, Jango's terrible deeds do not reflect our operations here. The templates created from his DNA are programmed to be loyal to their Jedi generals and the Republic. They are here to serve you in your war against the Separatists. You can trust them with your lives. Cassius remained cautious. The clones he had met thus far seemed like loyal soldiers. But the entire situation still felt off to the young Jedi. Soon they arrived in one of the many hangars where a legion of clone troopers were waiting in formation, perfectly in order. The trooper in front was wearing different armor from the rest. He seemed to be someone of importance. This is Captain Krieger. He is the commanding officer of the 303rd Division. He answers to you two now. Captain, step forward. The clone captain stepped forward and saluted them. Captain Krieger, CT-3367, 303rd Division. At your service, General Takai. A pleasure to meet you, Captain. I've heard good things about your men. I do hope they live up to what I've been told. I promise you they will exceed your expectations, General. Good to hear. This is my Padawan, Cassius Urshan. It's an honor to meet you, Commander. Commander? That's right. We serve under you and your master. That makes you a commanding officer in the 303rd. Cassius was equally humbled and confused. All his life he had been the student. Now he was helping command soldiers. Well, I promise to do my best, Captain. Now that introductions are out of the way, 
We should make ready for departure. Affirmative. At attention, brothers. Proceed to your designated shuttle and prepare for immediate departure. The clones saluted in unison and marched off to their ships. Let's head back to our ship, Cassius. Captain, upon your arrival, rendezvous with me on the bridge. Roger that, General. Cassius watched as the soldiers climbed into their ships before following his master as they were led back through the corridors. I assume that our troops made a good first impression. I must say I'm pleased thus far. But I'll need to see how they fare in the field before I can make any judgment. Our troopers are the finest soldiers in the galaxy. I promise you will not be disappointed. Cassius and his master bowed to the Kaminoan and walked back outside into the cold rain and back to their ship. As they neared the cruiser, Cassius still couldn't get over how strange this change in his life felt. Less than a year ago, he was a simple Padawan training hard to become a Jedi Knight. Now he was involved in a galactic conflict. He wished Sarah was here. She knew how to take his mind off these things. The shuttle soon landed on board the Star Cruiser, and the two Jedi stepped out. Cassius, I'm going to speak with the captain. In the meantime, why don't you introduce yourself to the clones? I'm sure they'd like to meet their new commander. Yeah, about that. You told me I'd be helping lead the clones in our division, but you didn't say anything about me being a commander. Well, I wanted to tell you later, but I guess it's out now. I don't know. Do you think I'm ready for something like this? Master Takai put her hand on his shoulder. I think you're more than ready. You've put in a lot of hard work these past few months. I'll be here if you have any questions or concerns. For now, just follow protocol. And try to set a good example for these men. Okay? Okay. Thank you, Master. Cassius parted from his master and walked over to the clones, standing by, talking to each other. Uh, excuse me. Commander on deck. At attention. The clones immediately took formation and stood at attention. Okay, that's gonna take some getting used to. Uh, <clears throat> at, at ease, men. I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Cassius Urshan. I will be serving as your commanding Jedi officer second to Master Takai. To be completely honest with you all, as much as I've learned about protocol, wartime strategy, and military decorum, this is all still pretty new to me, as I'm sure active duty will be for you. As I'm sure you're aware, we're currently en route to Herdessa to hopefully rally the system to our cause before the Separatists can. With any luck, this should be a fairly straightforward mission. Should things turn sour, however, Master Takai and I will be right there alongside you to see to it that any threats are dealt with swiftly. We have a long war ahead of us. The Separatists have already proven themselves to be extremely formidable adversaries. But you all have something inside you that no battle droid could ever have. Heart and soul. The Force flows through each one of you as it flows through me and every living thing. If we place our trust in the Force... We will emerge victorious. I promise you that. The clones cheered and clapped as Cassius sighed in relief. He never fancied himself much of a public speaker, but he seemed to have rallied his troops well. As you were. May the force be with us all. Cassius stepped aside and pulled out his hollow projector. Entering a code, he tried to contact Sarah. Within a few minutes, a flickering blue image of Sarah appeared. Hey. Hey. Nice armor, soldier. Cassius smiled. Well, I'm still getting used to it. How are things back at the temple? They're going about as well as can be expected. We have Jedi spread throughout the galaxy, so we're a bit short-handed here at home. Any news? Nothing as of now. At least nothing too important. Corbin just got back from the Outer Rim. How is he? He seems kind of... distant. I think the stress is starting to get to him. I'll try to call him later. If you see him, tell him I'm thinking of him. I will. Sarah, I miss you. Even with the hologram, Cassius could see the affection in her eyes as she nervously twirled her braid. I miss you too. We'll see each other again before you know it. Okay. I'll talk to you later. Be careful, Cassius. You too. The hologram ended as Cassius thought about Corbin. 
Corbin was a tough guy, even for a Jedi. If the war was getting to him already, Cassius feared how it might affect him. Sooner or later, the Clone Wars would end. He only wondered how he would be changed, if he even made it out.